Ula, come on in. I know it's late. And I know some of y'all got work tomorrow. Some of y'all don't. Some of y'all ain't got no job. But um, we all can come in together. So come on in. Share and invite. Share and invite. Share and invite. Welcome, 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 welcome. So listen. It's the national. It's just a bunch of stuff going on, y'all. And so I just felt like. You know, I tend to always pop up when we need a little bit of laughter, we need a little bit of prayer, we need a little bit of, of comfort and faith, and what better time than to come now in a time where we need a lot of faith, a lot of, a lot of encouragement, and, and some laughter. Uh, we're going through a season right now where uh, when, when, because we could have said if, but I think it's fair to say that when we go into quarantine, um, we have to consider those depression um, who battle with mental health and, um, and things of that nature. And so this is something that could easily, easily take us into whirlwinds of, of depression. Loneliness is a factor that can bring about um, depression. It is a factor that can bring about a lot of pain and a lot of sorrow. And so I wanted to make sure that I came on here one to uh to pray with you all uh maybe not to do call me core as usual but just to kind of be here uh with you all and just talk to you i'm not a doctor so there are no questions about nothing that's going on but what you know is we don't know what's going on and the best way for us to kind of to keep this at a minimum quarantine is to stay at home and to stay out of high packed areas and to keep our hands clean and to drink a lot of water and to not go and fight each other in the grocery store over toilet paper um but to kind of come together and and try to get through this together i know that this is very difficult for those of us who have faith and want to believe god and all of that um just because you have decided that you are going to be an at home online worshiper does not mean that your faith is has been compromised or that your faith is um is smaller than someone else's faith i think that right now it is important that it, when the when the president became the president Every prophet, every pastor was like, we got to follow our leaders. We, this is who the Lord has chosen. We're supposed to listen to them and honor them and whoop, 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 whoop. And as soon as the president and all of these people that we needed to honor, follow and listen to, uh, put out a affected us in some way, then um, now it's we going rogue, we're going to do what we want to do. And that isn't going to be helpful for the crisis that we are in. We have to be very, very intentional and very wise about this thing. If we can to go on like this is not a serious situation, then um, we're just going to make things worse. You could carry this disease several days and not even know that you have it. So that means you could be in church, clapping your hands, praising and worshiping, carrying corona, no. And because of that is why we need to stay at home. We need to stay at home because we do not know. You don't know if you have it or you don't. You don't know if you've been around someone who has it or you don't. You don't know what you're doing. So our doctors cannot be smart enough to help us combat cancer, but not be smart enough to help us combat corona. We have to be we have to listen, y'all. The Bible says that we, that wisdom stands in the street screaming out loud, hoping someone will hear her. That's us. 
We've got to be the one to hear. So I am on Periscope. And I am on Instagram Live. So if you're having problems on Facebook, meet us on Periscope. If you're having problems on Periscope, Instagram, uh, my connections are strong. It says on everything, a storm coming. So that could mess things up. As you see, I didn't beat my face or anything. I just came on here because I wanted to just be real with y'all because that's what somebody need to do. Somebody needs to be real, okay? We have to use wisdom or we are going to end up in an, a pandemic for several months, okay? That's, that's the reality. We cannot um, risk, the, risk the 90. Um, we have to consider the one. We have to consider the one. This is the time where pastors and prophets and bishops need to consider the one, the one that could have corona, the one that could be sick, the one that is unchurched, the one back to the church, but will so happen to go on social media as they do every day and find all of these services, all of these services, all of the gospel. We have mastered praise and worship in church. We have mastered all sermons, but have we truly mastered the great commission to go out into the world and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ? Have we? Have we mastered going for the ones that are truly lost? Or we just want to preach to the ones who already are giving you an amen? It's something that I think that we should consider. We should consider that there is a commission that God has given us. What office you are in. It doesn't matter if you are a prophet, an apostle, or whatever. The Great Commission is for us to go out into the world and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, the Bible says that in the end times, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That includes Facebook. That includes YouTube. That includes the flesh that we see as dirty and insignificant and worldly. Those are the ones that we are supposed to go after. And so I didn't want to come on here and, and say anything more than just, this is a time where we need to put the one We need to put the one in the forefront, not our title, not our position, not, not who we are. We need to put the one. And we can do that. The Lord has made it possible for us to spread the gospel of Jesus to all men. The Lord has made it possible for, for us to be able to tap into technology and breach the airwaves. So let's do it. Let's come together and let's breach the internet gospel. Let's do a revival across the airwaves. Because revival in churches. We have done revival in auditoriums and arenas and theaters. But nobody has done a revival on the airway. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go out and let's master the great commission of Jesus Christ. I had to start with that before the welcome song, because it's just been very heavy on my heart. I really do believe that God is taking us back to our first ministries. As a PK, 
as a PK and and from the heart of several PKs that I have heard. Um, this is an extreme opportunity for pastors and bishops, prophets, apostles to be about their first ministry. I titled this um, being quarantined to your first ministry because I think it not strange that God would have us quarantined in what he says is our first ministry. And so we have had pastors committing suicide. We have had pastors killing themselves. We have had we have had PKs killing themselves, going into depression, feeling unworthy, feeling overlooked. We have had volunteers and staff members that we have drained to the very last burnout. Could it be that this is an opportunity for pastors that were already on the edge of a break to go home? get restored, get refreshed? Could it be that pastors who have children who have felt overlooked because they have preached to the world but have not been able to preach to their children will get an opportunity to sit down with their parents, to sit down with their fathers and their mothers? Could it be that this is an opportunity for us to be about what was the priority to God? He said when he was coming back, the first thing it was the church. So I'm not sure why everyone is surprised. I'm not sure why everyone is surprised. This is an opportunity for us to be about our families. For us to, to seek God for ourselves, yes and to also use the resources that have been available to us. When we did have Bible study in church, y'all wasn't going. Now that you can't go, you want to throw a fit about not being able to go to Bible study in church. Before it was Easter, Mother's Day, and New Year's. I'm just being honest. Now we need to get back. We need to get our children back, pastors. We need to get our first ladies have been worn down. They need intimacy with their husband, but can't get intimacy with their husband because their husband has been a slave to the church. We got to get back. We have to get back to our first ministry, our first congregation. We have to, because if we don't, we're going to perish. We're going to perish because we care more about the audience than we do our anointing active in our home. I said it. We care more about the audience than we do about the anointing being effective in our home. ministry. We are being forced to focus on our children. We are being forced to focus on our spouses. We are being forced to focus on the first thing that you were supposed to be praying for, the first thing you were supposed to be covering, the first thing you were supposed to be surrounding yourself around. We're being forced to go to our families. So if you're a new boo, for you. And if you're a crew boo, you already know what to do. Okay. So I sing this welcome song to you. Are you ready? A one, a two, a one, two, three. Welcome, welcome to my room. Welcome, welcome to my room. Welcome, welcome to my room. We welcome you to my room welcome welcome to my welcome welcome to my room welcome to my room we welcome you the cjc crew welcome 
you to my room. Ba-doom, boom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen, okay. So, like I said, this is not going to be call me core flow as usual. Um, I'm just going to do what's on my heart and just, you know, call me Cora, you know. Uh, sometimes you call me Cora and you say, Cora, you can't say that. Sometimes you call me Cora and you say, Cora, you're preaching. Sometimes you just be like, hey, girl. So so this is going to be a very non, uh, non-dressy, non, non-formal um, time that we have. got my nails fixed. I went out to go get my nails done and those people in that nail shop have never asked me to wash my hands as much wash my hands today. So many bottles of hand sanitizer in that nail shop ever. Do you hear me? They took all the brushes away. You don't have no brush to get up under your nails. None of that is available. However, the soap and the uh, the hand sanitizer, oh, it was available today. I sat down in my seat before my services even started. She was like, would you go wash your hands? I was like, I have never. I, I'm on doing the Lord's Prayer, you know, getting in between my, my nails and my fingers and things. Y'all have never asked me to wash my hands. It, what in the world? The people made me wash my hands in the nail shop, but I had to get it fixed because I feel like in a minute, everything going to get shut down. And I just felt like my nails would be cute. You know, I may be stuck in the house, but at least my nails would be cute. Listen, um... The Ferocious Warrior Award is going to the CDC, okay? Okay? We're giving it to the CDC because they are doing a whole bunch more than what we're going to be doing, huh? And uh, and and they are just at the at the beginning of this uh, this here foolishness. And so I'm giving it to them, okay? I'm giving the Ferocious Warrior goes to the CDC, all of y'all, all of y'all that are in there doing what you do best, keeping us and telling us to sit down somewhere because that is exactly what we need to do. I don't know, Dr. Arnold, Ar Armand, sorry. I do not know if martial uh, law is coming, uh, but I do know that if we don't sit down somewhere, and we get to acting like we are the modern day Martin Luther Kings and Malcolms uh, that they might roll up in here to remind us that we ain't. It's possible. It is possible. I think that if we would listen to the CDC and listen to the Surgeon Generals and just listen that wisdom that they're talking to us about, then maybe martial law won't come. But who knows? You know, it's a lot of people out here going rogue. You know, some somebody posted today that they would go to jail before they shut their church down. And I get it. You know, we're all going to have some we're going to have some modern day Malcolms and, and Martin Luther Kings out here. Uh, I hope they don't have to come. Because I think that's going to be something we ain't none of us really prepared for or want, okay? Um, you got my book. Thank you. If y'all don't have my book already, go ahead and get Ferocious Warrior. It is such a, a time. You know, I didn't know when writing this book that we would be going through all that we're going through. Can you believe, y'all, that we are not even halfway through the year in this shenanigans? These shenanigans are going on. Get Ferocious Warrior so that you can dismantle your enemies and rise, okay? Because the other thing is, yes, you. some of you are covered by the blood, but some of us, some of them out here that are listening to you are not, okay? And so we need to give them the resources that they need uh, to be able to fill themselves uh, with the blood of, of Jesus, okay? Hey, Bailey family, okay? So um, there's that. Go ahead um, and do that. Listen, Janine, I'm getting my hair done tomorrow here at the house, okay? 
because listen, nobody has time. Nobody don't nobody have time. I'm I can't do it. I'm not gonna. I'm not able to do it. Okay. I've been counting down since I've been on. 14 days uh, since since we've been back. I got back on the 6th, so I'm just counting down um, to make sure that I'm not infected. Because again, you don't know. You don't know if you got it. Um, somebody said my glasses will protect me from corona. Yes. Um, I didn't even know that was possible. I'm not getting all hazmats and gas masks and things of that nature. I'm not doing that. But what I did have to do, because y'all are crazy, and y'all done gone out and uh, just ruined every grocery store's life that you could find. Y'all just went into Sam's and Costco. I mean, minutes after they say, don't be in large crowds, somebody said that don't include the grocery store. And y'all decided that toilet pra- Toilet paper, paper towels, and soap is something that is a necessity for you to grab all of it off of the the aisles. There, it's just empty, okay? Not to mention food, okay, that can be frozen. I mean, y'all, y'all out here going a little nuts. You're going nuts. All right, that's okay. Um, would the couponers please stand up? Listen, because... Um, this is a segment where we talk about things that was funny to me. And before I even give a food tip, because I think the food tip needs to be ration, okay? That's going to be the skinny girl tip and the fat girl tip. Ration your food out here, okay? <laughs> um, uh, what is funny to me is that these couponers that have a storage room full of items that y'all too are also going into the grocery store and wiping out those and and the Krogers. And then did you notice that they put the sign up on the owl for limited items after everything was gone? Did y'all know? Did y'all notice? They got the sign up that says you can of toilet paper, one pack of paper towels. Where is the one pack? Where is the one pack? Uh, what? Everything is gone. I was watching a video today, and y'all would not even let these poor stalkers put it up on the shelf. Y'all was standing around the boxes like, yeah, give me that Clorox. Yeah, yeah, grab me them Clorox wipes. What in the world? There's nothing. There's not one. No not one there's not one y'all y'all done took all the alcohol you done took all the hand sanitizers then they messed around and told y'all how to make your own hand hand sanitizers and you took all the aloe vera meanwhile the vegetables the vitamins and everything that would build your immune system against the virus is readily available Y'all need some vitamin C? Go right on to CVS and get you your your vitamin C. Like, this is ridiculous, y'all. A woman, an old lady fought a woman about one pack of toilet paper, and she had a whole cart full. Y'all, she had a whole cart full of toilet paper. They got in a physical fight. You're going to jail over toilet paper. Like, what? yes, now they're going to liquor stores and buying vodka because all the alcohol is gone. It's gone. If you sneeze out here, you can't have allergies no more. You can't have strep, a strep throat no more. You can't have a common cold no more. Everything is corona. In public, if you want, you got corona. Y'all need to stop this. This is madness. This, this, is, this is madness. It's, it's going to be okay. We're going to make it through. If we get to the end times, it's going to be because y'all took everything. When you go to the Brawny website and they say, sorry, out of stock, out of stock, what? Amazon is out. 
Do you know how much stuff y'all had to get from Amazon for it to be completely gone? Everything is gone, y'all. This is not okay. Okay. It's not all right. So I definitely wanted to talk about this because it's ridiculous and y'all need to do better. You need to do better. You you do my risk per how, how are you fighting an elderly person about toilet tissue? She is the risk. What in the world? No, nah, child, I didn't go shopping because look, guess what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to fight y'all over toilet tissue. I'm not going to do it, okay? I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I'm not built for it. I don't desire to think about how to even go about fighting somebody over toilet tissue, okay? Like, I don't even know. How do you fight somebody over, oh, you better give me, you, oh, you better give me that angel soft. Like what? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. Um, So I'm not going, <laughs> I'm not going out there. I'm not going to the stores. I did Instacart and I did Instacart by faith. Okay. Some of y'all was going to church by faith. I did Instacart by faith. I was like, dear Lord Jesus, you know where the dial is. So send me in the direction of the Tao, Lord God. And so the Lord made a way where there seemed, ah, Shabbat, did not to be no way, okay? There seemed to be not no way, and the Lord made a way, okay? So I got my toilet tissue. I got my paper towels, huh? I got my aloe vera oil and, and, huh, let me catch you on this, okay? I might give the Ferocious Warrior Award to me because let me tell you something about real faith. Real faith will have you in preparation before the crisis, okay? So about a month ago, I bought boxes of toilet paper, boxes of paper towels, and a box of alcohol. I don't know why. I've never done that before. And so when this crisis started, I thought, ooh, let me and get some alcohol. I'm make my own disinfectant spray. These people ain't gonna hold me down. And so I was like, ooh, shoot, Amazon ain't got no, they ain't got no uh, alcohol, babe. And my babe was like, babe, you ordered a box of alcohol a month ago. You ordered a box of tissue the uh, last month. You ordered a box of paper towels. Like, I don't know why you did that, but we're set as far as that is concerned. And I thought to myself, the Lord will provide for you before the problem. He will. You just have to keep your ear close to the Holy Ghost. I don't know why I bought a box of alcohol, but I know now. I don't know why I got a box of toilet tissue, but I know now. I don't know why he set me up to start different things with my body, but I know now. Okay? I'm not going to let this bring out the fat girl in me. I'm going to get on my time because the devil is a liar. I'm still going to meet with my trainer until they say N-O, okay? Because we was anyway, okay? I'm not going to let this in me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's not going to happen. I'm still going to keep losing my weight, losing my inches, losing my pounds, huh? So if you are believing God to cover you from corona, please believe him to cover your behind for toilet tissue, huh? Would you believe him for toilet tissue in this season? Would you believe for towel in this season? Huh? Huh? Anybody? I'm going to get skinny for the people. Listen, I don't have time for the shenanigans, okay? Now, I want you all to know that this is not to take things lightly, but really, y'all are doing team too much, okay? We 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 about to be in apocalypse. Like, y'all about to start trials and tribulations. We ain't even supposed to be in trials and tribulations. Y'all about to start trials and tribulations because you out here buying toilet tissue and, and wiping out counters. And I mean, stop it. Stop. Please. 
Call your granny that you ain't called for a year. Um, call her and check on her. Make sure she got toilet tissue and she got paper towels, okay? Call your big mama. Call your papa, okay? Make sure that they are good. I don't have any time for this, okay? So, no, I didn't go out to the stores because the CDC said stay out of large crowds. Guess what, y'all? That includes the grocery store. Get your life. Get your life together, okay? Get it together. So that's that part. What else? Um, your children are at home. I know that that sucks, you know. Um, I got two kids, so I, I understand that uh, when you got that email of the extension of spring break, you thought, no, this is the extension of spring break. This is uh, a time of suffering. <laughs> that is, that's what this is. This isn't an extension on spring break. When have you ever extended spring break? And, and that's how to keep you calm. That's why they said that. that. We're extending spring break for two weeks. No, you're extending the suffering of parents for two weeks. What are we supposed to do with our kids? I'm not even talking about them eating because my kids going to eat, okay? But don't worry about that, okay? My kids going to eat. I'm saying, what are we supposed to do with our kids for two weeks? What? <laughs> what are we supposed to do? Oh, Lord. Listen, I'm over here, like, stressing, like, okay, maybe we can make our own board games. Like, get the cardboard out, y'all. We can figure out a, our own game. It's going to be called Suffer Not the Children, okay? Suffer Not the Children. Uh, somebody make a dice. We're we going to make our own cards. We gonna, what are we supposed to do? So, real life, I figured that I would take this time to, like, really teach my children about the word of the Lord and, you know, have, like, little Bible studies and mommy and me times with my kids and actually read the books that's in their room. You know, you know how you got a bunch of books uh, in your kids' room. You don't never read to them because you just figure you'd get to it. We're going to read them books. We're going to read them books. Uh, We're going to watch movies. You know, I'm going to teach my daughter how to cook. You know, like real life stuff, not just like eggs and grilled cheese, but like real life stuff um, that, that she need to know in life. You know, um, we we are going to try to create our own game. Like I'm going to just, you know, challenge their creativity. I have a lot of educational books uh, here at the house, so I'm going to do that. I also saw a wonderful schedule that I will post up on my Instagram uh, story for y'all to see that is just great for your children because you want, don't want them to be in um, like just free ball, you know, rogue life. You want to keep them on a schedule. Um, and I have to make sure that I talk to my kids about washing their hands. Like my daughter came in to give me a hug this morning. I was like, oh, did you wash your hands? And then she walked in to the, to the sink, washed her hands for a quick minute, then came back in and was like, I washed my hands pretty good. Pretty good? Girl, no, corona is real. Wash your hands, sing happy birthday to yourself twice. Don't come back in here to give me a hug about nothing till you wash your hands. Okay, nobody has time. Nobody has time. Now, Tuga, he has been washing his hands every minute. And I don't think it's about germs, but I think that he enjoys the opportunity to just play in the sink. So be careful about that, okay? Some of y'all little kids just like to play in the sink water. So they just like, whoo, mama said, wash my hands. And they just splashing water and just living their best life, okay? So watch out for that, okay? for that. I'm going to make sure that they're reading. I'm going to make sure that, that we're playing. Um, you know, we've got, we still have electricity. Like again, uh, we're not in the end times, but, um, we're going to do like dance. We're going, we're going to, we're going to try to get through this because two weeks is just the start y'all. We may look up and if the people are home, then 
end up doing this a little bit longer. Okay, we're going to end up doing this a little longer. So I'm just trying to make it the best way I can. I may figure out how to make homemade cookies. Uh, that's something my sister do. I don't know how to make homemade cookies, but she does. And I did tell my parents that if there is to be a lockdown, that they should just expect us at their gate expeditiously because who does not have time for the shenanigans? Okay, I will go straight to my parents. Forget what you heard. I don't have any time, okay? I will pack up all my toilet tissue, all my homemade disinfectant and alcohol and paper towels and put them in the trunk and pack my kids up and we will go to my parents' house straight away, okay? For real, because nobody has time. So, you know, keep your head up out here because we don't know, y'all. We don't know. But definitely make sure you're praying on House, plead the blood of Jesus over your house because real life, the blood of Jesus still works. I don't know if y'all have read the John G. Lake testimony. That has been a great encouragement to me. So go ahead and read that. I'm not going to read it right now. It's too long. And um, I don't know Google. Okay. We still have Google. Okay. Um, so go ahead and make sure that you Google John G. John G. Lake testimony during the bubonic plague. Short story, short summary, basically the blood of Jesus and the consuming power of God kept him safe from the bubonic plague. And I believe that the same blood of Jesus and the power of God that kept him safe from the bubonic plague is uh, the same blood of Jesus and the same power of God uh, that can keep us safe. If you're not saved, you may want to hurry up and get that done um, because uh yeah, you know, it's just good to have the Holy Ghost, you know, in you, uh, through you, for you, so that you, uh, I don't know, don't get corona. You know, uh, if you take the cross, the blood of Jesus, and you believe, and you believe in him, and you believe him to be a savior, then he will do just that. He will save you, okay? Um, we are not on quarantine yet. But it sounds like that's where we're going. Things just keep getting shorter and shorter. First, it was like 500 people. If, if it's 500 people or more, we don't want y'all around. Now, CDC, then they say it's uh, 250 people. We don't want you around. Then, then they went down to 100. Now, it's 50. So, you know, when you use wisdom, because I like to use wisdom, you, you get to thinking. Um, probably not going to work out, you know, um, it's probably going to be out, out and about, we probably not about to be out, um, I would tell you to go and get, tell you to go stock up on toilet paper and paper towels, but we ain't got that, because, and so, um, essential oils, Wisdom is essential, and so is essential oils, okay? Get you some essential oils, tea tree oil, um, elderberry, okay? Shout out to my spiritual daughter, Dee Marie. She got me some elderberry, some uh, dried elderberry, and um, I made me some elderberry sy syrup the other day, and um, my kids have been taking it every day. Uh, also have Nutriburst. I've been taking Nutriburst and elderberry because... <laughs> The devil's not going to get me, okay? So get you some elderberry. Build your children's immune systems up, okay? Build them up. Uh, make sure that you are holding your breath every day for about 15 seconds. Things get a little, little tight up here. You get to coughing. You can't hold your breath. You might just want to drink you some more water. Do not go into the emergency room or anything like that if you think that you have the corona because if you have the corona and you go into or an emergency room, then everyone that you encounter in that emergency room has to be quarantined because they have been in contact with someone who has the corona, okay? So uh, that oh, she did yesterday, so I can tell you that. Elderberry is really great. It doesn't taste bad. My kids really enjoy it. I give them a teaspoon a day, and me and my husband take a tablespoon. There's my husband. Hey, boo. Um, yes, call first. Call the emergency room. Let them tell you what you should do. 
uh, do not go into the emergency room before calling first. Let them know, hey, I think that I may have the corona. What should I do? And they will instruct you on what to do. If you go to at Ask Dr. Jill on Instagram or, and I believe she was on Facebook as well. You can see her video that she did yesterday. It was very, very informative. She also did a video on washing hands because apparently y'all. And so that's sad in itself. And it was also very funny to me that we have so many videos on how to wash your hands because y'all don't know how to wash your hands, but that's all right. It's okay. You know, it's the first time for everything. Everybody need to learn something. You learn something new every day. I learned y'all don't know how to wash your hands, and then y'all learned how to wash them. So, uh, you know, it's a give and take situation that's happening. I think it's good all the way around, okay? Um, what else? I think that's everything. You having a runny nose again? I want y'all to consider there are still there is still strep. You can get elderberry at Amazon. You can get elderberry, I guess, at Whole Foods. I, again, I'm not recommending anybody go to any stores, but you can order it from Amazon. Um, you can order it from Amazon, and once you get Amazon, then uh, Google you a recipe. Recipe. Uh, for elderberry syrup and get you a mason jar or something you can put it in um, because it does, it boosts the immune system. My son actually had a little bit of a runny nose uh, the last couple of days. And since I've given it to him, his nose hasn't been running. And he told me that his throat feels better as well. So um, yes, I don't want y'all to be forgetting about the other diseases that's still out here. There are still sinus infections, okay? There are still common colds. There are still strep. Everything ain't corona, okay? And if you have a runny nose, you probably don't have corona because that's not even one of the symptoms so actually been really good at that um no you can't get nutriburst at amazon you got to go to a, a total life changes person um you can find them on instagram too or go to the website total life changes uh and you can order nutriburst from there um yeah y'all we got to stick together we got to be there for one another because I mean, it's just good for us to do that. Yes, the essential oils, tea tree oil, uh, fresh oregano, orange, lemon, um, eucalyptus, peppermint oil, clove oil, cinnamon oil. Listen, I, I made my own disinfectant spray yesterday. It had vinegar, water, uh, alcohol, 91% isoproil. I guess that's how you pronounce that, alcohol. Um, and I put all my essential oils in. It said 15 drops of essential oils. I just grabbed all the essential oils I had. I was just putting it all in there. Just just 15 drops of this and that and this and that. I figured it's either going to smell good or blow up, but at least it'll work. So I just <laughs> I put everything in there, okay? And uh, we sprayed everything down. My staircase. The doorknobs, I went and sprayed around my door handles of my car, my uh, my wheel, everything, okay? Because nobody, I'm telling y'all, don't nobody have time. I sprayed down the shower handles, the, the faucet handles. I sprayed everything down. And, and my disinfectant got every essential oil we got in the house. We got at least 10 essential oils in there uh, right now. Uh, it smelled like a little bit of everything, but I bet you this house is disinfected because... They got time okay so you know just be out here uh yeah you can put it in a hairspray bottle um i'm not sure a hairspray bottle can't be opened i think i think she just mean like the regular spray bottles not hairspray but like the spray bottles that you put water in and, and things. I think that's what she means. Okay, so you get you, you them. If you ain't got one of them, pour you 
to finish with your Clorox and stuff, like you got Clorox spray bottles, you can put it in there too. And that'll be just fine. Now listen, don't put no bleach in your disinfectant and then be spraying your couches and call me mad because now your gray couch got white spots on it and you don't know why because I didn't tell you to put bleach in it. I said water, alcohol, all the essential oils, okay? All the essential oils. And you can get them on Amazon because y'all ain't bought them out yet. But, I, you know, hurry up because any day now, the essential oils will be gone as well, okay? Elderberry can also be gotten at Amazon. Some elderberry, make you some elderberry syrup, take you some elderberry. Listen, don't it, it, it sound like the Lord? It's called elderberry. That's that's the Holy Ghost. It came from an elder, and and his name was probably Barry. Elderberry is trying to save our lives out here. Okay, so get you some elderberry syrup and and be blessed with your elderberry syrup. Give it to your kids as well. Okay. It's going to help you. Um, elderberry. Yes, that's how you say it. It's, it's just like the elder in the church. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's elderberry, B-E-R-R-Y. And, um, and you'll be able to get that for yourself. Uh, yeah, I think that's it, y'all. It's the National Day of Prayer. Um, all of y'all are the crew booze. You know, if you've been rocking with me, you've been kicking it with me all this time, you know, shout out to you. Shout out to you. Um, <laughs> she said, why do you play? Laugh out loud. I'm done. You need a comedy show. <laughs> Listen, I told you I came on to give you a little laugh, a little wisdom, a little faith. All right. Uh, no, see, my doctor said if you overdrive your system with echinacea, then it can kind of suppress your, it can suppress your immune system. Echinacea is for if you are in the swings of, uh, the condition, not to protect you from, um, the condition. Okay. Uh, you got that. And, um, yeah, buy, uh, cook things in, in, in masses, y'all. You know, make you, this is the time for spaghetti. This is the time for pork and beans, okay? This is the time for Alfredo's, okay? This is the time for that big pot of oatmeal, ham. Huh? This is the time for cream of wheat. I know you don't like it, but this is the time for cream of wheat. I tell you, Ramen, there aren't any more in the stores because y'all, have taken that away as well. So, uh, to the crew boo, not destroy the grocery stores. You are the crew boo of the of the day of the week of this crisis until we are done with it. Yes, this is the time for grits. Okay. This is the time. This isn't the time to have guests over, okay? Ration, y'all, the food tip, skinny girl and fat girl is ration. This ain't the time for house parties, okay? This is the time for you to not have seconds. My I made chicken the other day. The chicken was good. My daughter was like, is there any more? No, there is not. Two pieces tonight will do, all right? It will do. This is not the time for seconds, okay? It's not the time. This is not the time for seconds. It's not the time for thirds, okay? It's the time to ration, huh? Look at your neighbor and say ration. Say it to Siri so I could get the spelling right because I wasn't really sure how you how often we don't ration. And so I had to tell Siri ration so that she could spell it out for me because I wasn't sure. But that is going to be the tip for today. Ration out here, okay? Ration. Yes. I thought it may have been like a special spelling, but it's it's just like ratio and um I, yeah. So that's what yeah, chicken and rice. Come on, help the people. Cause some of y'all don't know how to survive. Okay. Um, are we encroaching the end times? Is this the second coming of Jesus? Listen. I do believe that we are encroaching the the end times. We are. We are. We're most certainly encroaching the end times. Now, um, 
so you need to get right. You need to get right and you need to get ready, okay? Because we is in, living in the last days. I know y'all didn't want to believe Great Granny when she said it. I didn't really want to believe, believe Great Granny when she said it. But now it's for real. It's for real. It's happening, okay? The the pouring of God's flesh is happening all over the world. Um, Yeah, the, the sign all over the world, like, it's happening. Soups, yes. Seek, help the people, y'all, because some of them don't know. Y'all sitting over there like, what do we eat? How do we do it? Try golden seal and garlic tablets. It's a protector. All right, Lashana. I mean, y'all heard it here first. Garlic tablets and golden seal. I don't know what any of that is. Ham and beans, okay? I don't know where you're from. I've never heard of ham and beans. I've always heard of pork and beans, and that's basically just cut up hot dogs and some beans okay when the struggle gets real that's what you do ground beef um i oh see i have two uh large packs of ground beef as well so and things of that nature you 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 want you just want to spread chili see the this is what i love about my crew booze because they won't have you out what you should make, okay? Soups, chicken and rice, meatloaves, potatoes and veggies. Yes, this is the time for that. Those are your food tips. Spread, Riv, if you don't get somewhere with this Kraft mac and cheese, you're disrespectful. You're disrespectful, Riv. You're disrespectful with the Kraft mac and cheese. It's not that bad yet. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's not. It's not so bad that we need to eat Kraft mac and cheese. It ain't. It's not that bad. I don't even know how to make shepherd's pie. Uh, shepherd's pie. Um, you know, Capri, if you've been here before, you know who I am. You know I'm not going to let you go without prayer. I'm not going to let you go without prayer. Um, we are most certainly going to pray. Um, yeah, that's all I got, y'all. I just want to give you a little laugh, little, little plead the blood of Jesus over your house, um, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, buy the 15 beans bags, but, you know, buy the beans, uh, look up recipes, you know. Um, yeah, this is the time of the signs. It is, in the uh, mayo sandwiches. Uh, my my nephew loves mayo sandwiches. You can have that. You can have that mayo sandwich. You can. Um. So yeah. Uh, if you don't or have not watched a service today, do not let Corona keep you from getting your word, y'all. Stay stay in your word. Stay in your word the season for you to get lazy with your spiritual relationship. This is the season for you to increase your spiritual relationship. And you, a prophetic voice, you going to tell these people to get lobster? That is, this is not the time for lobster, author, prophetic voice. See, I tell you, see the people out here telling y'all to get lobster. You better not go out there and get it. Lobster don't stretch. It don't stretch. When you seen lobster stretch, lobster don't lobster don't stretch. We need stretching meals. That's what we need. Lord Jesus. Ah, uh, ooh, the acai bowls go hard. I do have the stuff I need to make my acai bowls at home, everything but bananas. But that's all right. It's okay. Um, yeah, we're not we not ignorant of Satan's devices. We are not oblivious. We have to stay prayed up. We have to stay in our word. We have to stay uh, under our covering. If you have a church and your church is is respected enough by you to uh, to be the place that you go to eat and to listen to. Do not let the decision of your church suddenly change your respect for that church. Allow that church to continue to be the anchor by which you operate in wisdom. And so if your bishop has said, we are going online, 
heed to that wisdom because there's a reason. They still hear from the Lord. It's not like if you keep your church open that you are suddenly hearing from the Lord more than the bishops that you have trusted. My father is doing online services. And that is because he is operating by wisdom to protect his congregation and to try to isolate this situation and to lead by example, by listening to leaders. And he also has been wise for every crisis that we have ever faced. So nothing has changed. If your pastor, your bishop has closed their church and has decided to go online, don't bash them, don't rebuke them, don't start going to other people pages because you just want to tell them how great they are for keeping their church open. Respect the wisdom of the bishop you have always respected and consider that God is telling them something that needs to be done. Just consider it, okay? Oh, all right. I'm going to pray for you all, um, and I'm going to let you go. I'm worried, though, that Instagram is going to... Before I get done, um, I didn't do a QA. and a So this is what I do. I will cut Instagram off. I come right back, y'all. I'm going to cut Instagram a new video. Start a new video and uh, do prayer and then do Q&A because I, I told y'all y'all could ask questions, but I wasn't a doctor. I don't know how to answer none of them medical questions. So I'm back and we're going to pray and then we'll open up the... F no, let's do questions first and then I'll close in prayer. How about that? We'll do questions first. If you have questions for me, we are back because I knew Instagram was about to cut us down. They was about to shut us down. I think they give you like an hour to say what you need to say, and then you got to get on about your way. So we are back. But um, this is going to be Q&A time, so I want you to ask your questions if you have any questions. Child, didn't he preach? My daddy preached today to about 20 people like it was 20,000, okay? That's why That's why he might straight up. That's why I rocks with my daddy because he don't need no full church to, to preach like a, a madman straight up in his jogging suit giving y'all the business on today, okay? He preached like a madman on today. I love him. I respect him. He is my bishop. And if he says that we need to stay our tails in the house, I'm listening to him because he has been the spiritual advisor for quite a few years. Okay. So um I I'm just not gonna test it. You know, I'm just not, I'm not gonna test it. Did you dance at your brother's wedding? Did I dance? Child, I was on my way to go get a slice of cake and they turned the wobble on. <laughs> she was in there, okay? I love the wobble, okay? I love the wobble. I love all of the line dances. I enjoy them. I, dance. I listen to dance music, okay? Uh, and we most certainly... We most certainly danced at my brother's wedding. And it was a beautiful, very intimate wedding. He wanted something simple. And um, that's what we did. And it was beautiful. Hey, bro. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, that was a good question. You like, isn't it crazy that he had just did that message on Untouched and all of this is happening? Yes, my brother wanted a small wedding. He did. He wanted something simple. So it was and and friends really uh, maybe just a few a few friends but mostly family and um and we cried child the entire time soon as he hit the door and i saw his tears i was like <laughs> i did i was doing my instant story i know y'all could just hear me just a sniffling away are you the older sister i am the oldest sister um I'm the oldest girl anyway. I have uh, two older brothers. 
What about purchases made from China? Is it okay to buy? Girl, I don't know, child. I don't know because I'm sure that a lot of the stuff that we get uh, is from China. I just been spraying my Amazon boxes down and stuff with disinfectant spray. You know, if you can get it, go ahead and get it. I had to get a watch charger today and they said it wasn't going to be delivered to Wednesday. This is what we're doing now. It's not all right. No, I cry, I cry, but I still dance. How has it been adjusting to your new healthier lifestyle? Malia, it has been um, trying times, okay? <laughs> okay, it has been trying times. Results, so I am going to stop. Um, I think it's very, I think it's also very, very interesting how healthier lifestyle and journey, um, before all of this stuff happened, because, um, I feel better than I ever have. I have been doing my vitamins and drinking more water and all of that stuff. And I believe that had I not started my healthier lifestyle, um, a year ago now, a little over a year ago now, um, that I wouldn't have been in the position that I am in. Now I have lost um, 61 pounds. Uh, I have asthma, or rather had asthma, but uh, anything like that. And so um, though it has been difficult and it's been hard, uh, consistency, I believe, is the hardest part about living a healthier lifestyle. My my new sister Heather Heather Lindsay she posted something yesterday on my toes and she said how are you if you can't defeat a donut and child it it was it was good to me okay it was good to me it stepped all over my toes but she is absolutely correct we cannot proclaim that we are able to uh cast demons out and destroy demons and things of that nature but we can't defeat um gluttony and and donuts and pizza and stuff so it's hard but i'm doing it and somebody asked how did i start i started small y'all i started walking up and down my sidewalk up and down my sidewalk, and then I stopped. Um, uh, no, I did that for a week. So I walked up and down my sidewalk for, you know, however long it took. And then the next week I did it around my block. And then the next week I did it walking. And then the next week I got on my bike. And then the next week I um, started my Peloton. And so I would get on my Peloton. I started my Peloton with the 20 minute ride. And then I did that for a week and then did a 30 minute ride. I did that for a week and then did a 45 minute ride. I did that for a week, just a whole month of just getting my body into movement, into movement. And um, the following month was about me attacking my appetite. So, uh, so far, the best route that has worked for me as far as eating is um, no red meat. Um, and very, very limited fast food, like once a week fast food, if I do that. Um, and so what I had to do is I had to do something that was going to work for me. Um, the keto diet, I couldn't mess with that. My doctor, um, that I couldn't do it, that it wouldn't be healthy for my heart or my immune system. So I, I didn't want to do like a trend diet. It was going to be healthy and realistic to my lifestyle. I know I'm not going to stop eating sugar ever again. I know that I'm not going to stop eating bread ever again. So I had to learn how to put myself in a position. Um, the same foods that I enjoy now will be available to me um, whenever. Um, and so I've just been kind of focusing on that. And um, I have been taking Nutriverse. Um, uh, I have been starting the, the Lasso Detox Tea 
as well. Uh, but I lost 61 pounds before I even started that. And that was just by working out three to four times a week uh, for 45 minutes to an hour, 15 um, minutes, uh, drinking my water, cutting down on fast food, cutting down on sodas, because that is my weakness. Sprite and bread. Those are my weaknesses, y'all. Um, so cutting down on those. I do everything in moderation. And so uh, I've been doing a challenge every month uh, for the people. We started one in February. I was going to do one in March, and then all of this happened. And I just think it's not fair for me to be like, don't eat this, don't eat that when we're in a crisis and you may only have these certain things to eat. So. That's what's been working for me. Um, be a TV with Cora in the Instagram stories again. Yes, there is. I was on tour with Sissy. And so um, while I was on tour, I couldn't do it. But we're going to be at home, child. You know, I'm going to be watching TV. I will bring y'all along on that journey. I was watching Love is Blind. I would do that as a TV with Cora option, but um, it is not, it's not in the rating. So I, TV with Cora is TV 14 or below. Um, and and like profanity or anything like that in it. So um, we have, we have limited uh, resources with the TV with Cora. Um, so happy that Cornelia says, I was so happy that I was able to take a picture with you in Houston. Thank you. I enjoyed doing that, walking around and welcoming everyone. Oh, yes, my brother did an amazing weight loss journey. Thank you, that blue makeup. Yes, my good big sister did that look for me. Uh, it took me, I, I wore it all day long, didn't want to take it off. How old am I? Years old. I finished the line. I love the line, and I will not be a spoiler alert, but I really, really. Um, sounds great, sounds great, sounds great. What exercises have helped you most in losing weight? Peloton um, and my trainer, uh, whatever workout she does uh, for that day has, has been very helpful. I find that I sweat more with her than ever before. Are you still doing a mentoring program? Yes, I am. I uh, will be finishing up my three-month sessions uh, next month. And my six-month sessions will be done in June. And then I'll take in more clients. Um, he, he, my brother, when he is ready to share his story, but um, he looks amazing. And so I'm sure that he'll share, he'll share his testimony very soon on that. Any tips to cut out sugar, slow or cold turkey? Um, I do everything slow because I think it's realistic. You can't go from like one extreme to the next, you know? So like one day you're eating all the donuts in the world and the next day, like no donuts, like that's not realistic. So that's why I'm saying I had to do moderation and kind of cut things down. So like I like a lot of sugary things. And so instead of doing sugar, uh, well, unhealthy sugars, I do acai bowls. I love acai bowls. It's like my ice cream. I could eat them every day. And though it is high in sugar, it is high in sugar from a fruit standpoint, not a of sugar Kool-Aid standpoint. And they are filling and I love them, and I'm going to miss them when we go into quarantine because I didn't get enough acai bowls for the addiction that I have to them for eight weeks. God help us. Pastor Cora, can you please pray for my husband? He has been in the hospital. 
for days now. He does not have the coronavirus, but I do need prayers for God to heal him and that he gets all his strength back. Absolutely. Prayer time will be at the end of this. You know how to cook vegan. You can't cook for me. I don't, I'm not vegan and I'm not going to be vegan. I don't, I'm not going to be vegan. I will never be vegan. Uh, vegan is not even, it's not a realistic lifestyle for me. It's not a desire that I have on the inside. I don't dream about it. I don't think about it. I don't desire it at all. When people say, will you ever go vegan? I immediately say no, because I know who I am on the inside. And the Lord has not led me to do vegan. I that animals have a purpose as well and it is not just to run around in the fields and eat grass i believe that the cow has a purpose yes and that is burgers huh that is ribeye huh that is filet steak on the bone yes okay and i am not like a huge animal lover like that to where i am like you know broke down tears because of the cow uh, being a burger. I'm just not that person, but shout out to those of y'all who, uh, who are, you know, really pet friends, you know, um, but I do, I believe the pig's purpose you know, includes both eating slop, but also bacon and sausage, pork chops, okay? Steakhouse pork chop, uh, pig's ultimate purpose in life. Like if you have ever had that pork chop from Perry Steakhouse, you will understand what I'm saying because God had to have put pigs on earth for that Perry Steakhouse pork chop. There, there is no other reason. Like somebody may say chitlins, somebody else may say bacon and sausage. And yes, there is that purpose too. But that pork chop, that pork chop at Perry Steakhouse, My God, yeah. Whew. it's a blessing, okay? I shan't, I shan't turn away, okay? I shan't turn away from it, okay? So, uh, no, I don't be doing vegan meals, but if you can make a meat meal, that'll be fine. Everybody in my house eat meat. Everybody in my house eat meat. Everybody that I know, we we eat meat, okay? Now, I do have some vegetarian, spiritual children, and you know, to each their own, but if they come to my house, they need to no. know. I don't even know, okay? And I, I, I made a little vegan spaghetti for my daughter one day. She enjoyed it. She enjoyed it. So, I guess I could kind of toss up a little, a, a little vegan something here and there, but uh, yeah, I'm not a vegan. It's not going to happen. Uh, I got you. I got you, Andrea. I got you. We're going to pray for strength for everybody. Trust. Um, vegan ice cream. Cassandra, Cassandra, you be the one. Cassandra be the one on here on that on the healthy. Ooh, Cassandra be the one. She's steady trying to give tools on on healthy stuff. Oh, let us live our lives. Yes. Yes. She says little Little sickle official. Okay, I guess that's the name. Uh, I am making Rotel dip as we gather on this line. How much pounds you got left to your perfect weight? Uh, about about sixty. About sixty. I wanted to lose one hundred and twenty pounds. Um, and so yes, I got about sixty to go. And I believe in my my. My two options for my birthday is 
skinny and sexy or pregnant. Those are my only two options, okay? I'm either going to be skinny and sexy or pregnant in July. Those are the only two options, okay? So y'all just keep on watching. Keep on watching. Okay, Pamela, tell them, burger, my sister, okay? I like the burgers. I've tried so many times to become vegan, especially after coming off a fast. It's not, it's not realistic. It's not realistic for me, okay? Shout out to those who have the beefless burger. Cassandra, with this beefless burger. I have no time. I have no time for you, Cassandra. No time. Okay, have you taken advantage of the 50%? Teresa, know, know that I will find a sale, okay? Listen, we went, my, my brother had a birthday party across the street from Perry's. Let me tell you how serious. Birthday party. Was uh Perry Steakhouse up and was like, Yo, can I get that pork chop with extra applesauce to go? Left out my brother's birthday party and and drove across the street, okay, to get to get this Perry's pork chop. Let me it is no games, okay. So, yes, when it is 50% off, when it is not, okay, she gets the pork chop if I am ever in the vicinity. I do that the same way with Cinnabons. If I'm ever at Park Small, I, I must get a Cinnabon, okay? I have to get it. It's just it, you, you have to live your life like that. Um, Skinny, sexy, and pregnant by faith. I, I, that'll work too. That'll work too, okay? If, if it's just belly, because this is why I'm doing it, y'all. You know, I want to be, I want y'all to know that I'm pregnant, okay? Like, I don't want you to kind of guess and, and you know, so I want y'all to know. So I want my belly to be like so pregnant and I want to be so small around my belly so that when you see me, you like, ooh, she pregnant. Not like, mm, did she eat? too many donuts because sometimes you don't be knowing when people is pregnant and when they not and i want people to know like when you see me i want you to know she is pregnant okay so i gotta get small so that when i get pregnant i got a big belly and and y'all don't think it's a fat belly it's not a donut belly it is a baby belly because sometimes you have like a donut belly and a baby belly and people don't like really know like is she pregnant is she not and and i don't want people to even have to wonder you know like i want them to be like that is a pregnant belly okay so i'm really getting skinny because i don't want people to like be kissing okay but don't worry like if you is out there and you are you know big and pregnant shout out to you too like that's beautiful but that's why i'm getting skinny i'm getting skinny because i want people to know for sure she is pregnant that is a pregnant belly because it'd be like eight months and then they know like oh that was she pregnant but like when you like five months and stuff then they'd be like oh is it is it is it, a, is it a pregnant belly is it i don't i'm not sure and so then they don't be asking you and i want people to be like how far along are you because they just know for sure that it's a pregnant belly and i don't need to get skinny i know that's not like the goal or whatever i'm just saying like i want to be healthy enough that when i have my big you know what i'm saying like you y'all know what I mean. I'm not trying to get like super skinny or nothing. I'm just saying I want to be small enough so that when I get pregnant, you know that I'm pregnant. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. You live your life and do what makes you happy and healthy. I'm praying for you, girl. We all need each other when it comes to woman women issues like this. Seriously, though, I will be praying for you. Thank you, child. Thank you for praying for me. Happy Sunday beautiful i want to try to get on this diet good all the times it's it's believing god no weapon formed against you shall prosper all right keisha hold on happy sunday you look so beautiful to try to get on this diet good all the time it's believing god no weapon formed against you shall prosper yes keisha that's what we do 
we're trying to, we don't want to get on a diet. We want to change our lifestyle. So gluttony don't keep whooping our tail because gluttony whoops your tail to death. Quite literally, that's what happens. Okay. Baby belly. Happened at work pregnant. See what I'm saying, Teresa? Then people ask you like, are you pregnant and you're not pregnant? You've been eating donuts and so people don't know. I need you to know when you ask me that uh, that, that I, yes, this is a pregnant belly. This is not a donut belly. You know what I'm saying? It's a baby belly. Not a belly. Any more questions before we go into prayer time? Um, have you enjoyed Call Me Cora Uncut tonight? I hope that I was able to bring you a little laughter, a little love, a little faith, a little encouragement, and I'll close in what I do best, and that is pray. Um, teach me how to pray. Um, it's a lifestyle, honey. You pray, you pray uh, on the level of your faith, okay? You pray faith. And as your faith increases and your knowledge of the word of God increases and your prayer life will increase also. But just start with the bare minimums of what you know now and move forward. Um, I posted some scriptures up yesterday. You can start praying scriptures. And I believe that that's the best way to do uh, prayer is to pray the word of God because it can't come back void. And so uh, whenever, whenever I do pray, I always try to back it up with the word of God because again, God's word can't come back void. And so it's, um, it's important that you build your faith when you're wanting to uh, pray and you also uh, build your communication with God because that's all it is. And sometimes religion will make you feel like prayer has to be this big, huge deal when all you have to do is just sit down and, and talk to God about what you're going through and, um, and ask for what you need, confess, make make your confessions known to God, pray uh, at your level and continue to increase and continue to increase. Uh, breaking sugar habits, again, it's moderation, it's moderation. You, If you have any type of habit, has to be cut in moderation. Even if you have a habit of drugs, uh, the doctor weans you off, you know, like breastfed babies have a habit uh, of breastfeeding all the time. They had to be weaned off. So you have to wean yourself off and do things in moderation. You don't have to have sugar every single day. Stop telling yourself that lie. And if you are looking for sugar, you need to look for healthy sugar options. All right. Well, y'all already know what to do. I go back and I look at them, um, put up your names and things of that nature. We already had someone for healing. That goes without saying that I'm going to be praying for healing tonight. Um, but I'm also going to be praying from the from the a place of humility and, and us really humbling ourselves and repenting to God um, so that we can see a change in here. I am also going to do the CJ Coleman prayer challenge. If you're not aware of it, it's just a six hour night of prayer and worship that I do online on Facebook Live and on Periscope. And, um, and it has really uh, been a, a powerful experience uh, with God online. And so uh, that'll be coming up March 23rd. And I'm very excited about that as well. So yes, please put your prayer requests up and let's um, just go before the Lord. Okay. I'm reading. Okay. Okay, Pamela, I got you. Okay. It starts at 6 p.m., Amanda. So it'll be from 6 p.m. to midnight. Okay. Uh, I will be doing another podcast this week, and I will save your question and, uh, and answer that 
um, the next time I do my podcast, if that's okay, because I believe that that question is something that will help not just you, but other people as well. Jessica asks, what words of wisdom would I give to a divorced single mom who desires to be married again? And I'll answer that um, on the next podcast. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are Jehovah that you're Jehovah Gabor, you're the God that heals and you're the God of war. You will fight for us. You will protect us. You're Jehovah Nisi. You're Jehovah Shalom. You're the God of peace. You are Jehovah Shema. You are the ever-present God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your hand. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for who you are. We we send you adoration. We send you our love. We worship you and we call you holy. Before we even ask of anything, we call you holy. We call you righteous. We call you worthy. We call you pure. We call you loving. Lord God, we call you healing. We call you grace. We call you splendor. We thank you, God, because you're honest. We call you an honest God. We call you a God. We call you a way-making God. We call you a victorious God. We call you a will in the middle of the will. You're a destiny-giving God. You are a power-giving God. You didn't give us fear. Gave us power because you're a power giving God. You didn't give us fear. You gave us love because you're a love giving God. You didn't give us fear. You gave us a sound mind because you're a sound mind giving God. And so we worship you. We give you adoration. We give you glory. We give you praise. We say mighty is your name. We say marvelous is your name. We say worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy is your name. We'll keep on praying because your name is worthy to do it. We'll keep on seeking you because your name is worthy to be sought. God, we thank you for your blessing. Because you're a blessing giving God. You bless us in the city. You bless us in the field. You bless us in quarantine. And you bless us when we're out. You bless everywhere our feet may trod. Whether our feet trod in the church whether our feet trod in the stairs of our home. Everywhere our feet trod is blessed. We thank you for blessing our feet. We thank you for blessing our hands. When we praise you, Lord God, we know that you inhabit the praises of your people. Thank you because you're an inhabitant God. Thank you for laying us, God, beside still waters. We worship you. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, your protection, mighty God, you're a banner, you're a standard against the flood of the enemy. Who you are, we worship you, Lord God. God, we ask for your for your repentance over our lives. God, we repent. Wicked thing. In any wicked doings, any wicked sayings, any wicked mindsets, any wicked lifestyles that we have lived. For your word says that if my my name would humble themselves, turn from their wicked way, my face and pray, then will I heal the land. We repent tonight, God, for any wicked things that we have done. We repent tonight, God, righteousness that we may have walked in. We ask you, Lord God, to wash us from our sin. Wash us from our sinful nature. Wash us, Lord God, from, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, Lord God. Wash us. Wash us clean, God. Wash us from the inside out. Purge us, God, of anything that's not like you. Purge us, God, of anything that is blocking your healing. Purge us, God, of anything that is blocking your healing. Purge us, God, of anything that's blocking you from healing our homes, healing our land, healing our mind. Purge us, God, from anything that's blocking you for love and a sound mind. Purge us, God, 
that's blocking you from opening opening up the windows of heaven and pouring us out a blessing. Purge us of our wicked nature, Lord God. <clears throat> We're asking you, God, to turn things around. Turn things around in our life. Turn things around in our heart. Turn things around in our body. Hospital rooms, God. Your children are laying in hospital rooms. Your children are laying in quarantines and hospitals and ICUs, God, for many things other than corona. So, God, we're asking you, Amashe so to turn things around. Turn us around, God. Turn us around. Some of us don't even know how to turn from our wicked ways. Turn. Oh, Rabbi, turn us, God, from our wicked ways. Turn us, God, from our wicked tongues. Turn us, wickedness, God, that we might be healed, that we might be healed. Humble us, God, that we might be healed. Sanctify us, God, that we might be healed. We seek your face where to look. Show us where to turn. Show us what to do. Show us how to act, Lord God. We seek you, God, for an answer for your way, an answer for your will, an answer for your namesake, God. We seek this may reveal your glory to those whose are not revealing your glory. Let our life reveal your glory. Let our lives reveal humility. Let our lives reveal righteousness that our prayers may avail you, Lord God. Open your ears, God, to us. Open your ears to the cries of your children. Show us that you hear us. Show us that you hear the cries of your Show us what wisdom to listen to. Show us who to follow. Show us who to undergird. Show us who to support. Lord God, reach us where we need to be reached. Touch us where we need to be touched. Open up the door, God, for opportunities in the north, south, east, and the west. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit on us, oh God. We're open to receive you. We desire to receive you. We look forward to receiving you, God. Hear from us. Hear from us in the hospital. Hear from us in the shelters. Hear from us in our offices. Cover us, God, in your blood. We ask you, God, to forgive us for our sins tonight. In seem trivial. It may seem simple, God, but simply put, we ask you to forgive us for our sins tonight. Wash us clean as snow. Come into our hearts. Consume our bodies, God. That disease cannot inhabit us because you are inhabiting us. Come into us. Wash us, God. We're loved by you. We're asking tonight, God, for you to do a mighty work in our country, in our globe, God, to place your hand upon the globe. For we know the government is in your hand. We know that the president is in your hand. We know that everything is in your hand, God. So teach us how to be humble and to trust your hand when we don't see your plan. We're asking you, God, to heal. Don't just heal us from corona. Heal us from hatred. Heal us from racism. Heal us from judgmental thoughts. Heal us from abuse. Heal us from violence. Heal our land, God. Don't just heal us from the virus, God. Heal us from being a virus to your victory. Lord, do not 
to be a virus to your victory. Oh God, pour out, pour out, pour out the the wine and put in a new wine in us, God, a fresh anointing, a fresh fresh ear to hear, a fresh ear to obey. Lord God, do not allow us to be so caught up in the titles of what you have given us that we neglect what you've called us to do. Give us an urgency for your commission. Give us a passion for your commission. Give us a for your commission, God. Cleanse us how you want to cleanse us. Operate how you want to operate. Move how you want to move. Cover our children. Cover the sick. Continue to show us who you are, God. Reveal yourself. Reveal your glory to us. Give us clarity. Give us wisdom. Your word says that if we ask for wisdom, that it will be given to us. We're asking, we're asking for clarity tonight. We're asking for the spiritual gifts, am I, to be enlightened in us, God. Stir up the spiritual gifts in us. Be enlightened in wisdom, enlightened in miracles, enlightened in healing, enlightened in faith, enlightened in knowledge, Lord God. Teach us your word that we might interpret it. Teach us your word that we might discern it. Teach us, God. Give us a thirst for you, all the facets of who you are. Give us a thirst for it. Last but not least, God, I come against lack. I come against the fear of lack. I come against the spirit of fear, the, the fear of death, the fear of pain, the fear of loss. I come against the fear of the rabbi. I come against the fear in the name of Jesus by faith and by power. I speak and overcome all of the power of the enemy according to your word. Your word says that you've given us the power to tread and trample over scorpions and serpents and to overcome all power of the enemy. And Lord, your word says nothing, not corona, not virus, not cancer, not diabetes, not abuse, not liars, not judges, nothing by no means shall harm us. It's your word, God. I put a demand on your word. I put I put a demand on your word that we will tread and trample in authority, that we will not succumb, we will not be as Eve allowing the enemy to whisper in our ear and deceive us of who you really are, God. But we will trust in you. We will trust in you when we cannot trace you. We will not be deceived by fear yet again. We will not be the modern day Eve yet again. To your instruction, we will heed to the leaders you've placed. We will follow what you have said that we might have life and not death. If this is the test, God, show us how to pass the test, show us how to not entertain the dialogue of deception the dialogue of fear. Show us, God. Cover us, God. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I plead the blood. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I plead the blood of Jesus. We come against anxiety and depression, low self-esteem. God, we come against mental anxiety, mental exhaustion, 
God, we ask for your strength and your power to illuminate. Your word says that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. The country is in a weakness. We're in a crisis. Your strength be made perfect in it. And we thank you for even the unanswered and the unspoken prayers that you have yet to plant and blossom in advance for blossoming the unanswered prayers, for pouring your water on the unanswered and the unspoken. We commit our lives to you tonight. We commit our lives to your plan. We commit our lives to your way. We commit our bodies to you that disease can't touch us that when disease and viruses and sicknesses try to take hold in our body, that it will die before it even gets to our systems. I speak your blood over every cell in the body under the sound of my voice and even those who will listen to the replay. I Jesus over every cell, over our lungs, over our throats, over our nasal passages, over our hearts, over our stomachs. God, I speak your blood over the very vessel of our body internally and externally. I speak your blood over our skin, over our hair follicles hands, over our fingertips, our nail beds. I speak your blood to drench over your people because we may run out of toilet paper, <laughs> but we won't run out of your blood, Jesus. The groceries may be empty, but your blood Never runs out, God. I plead the blood. Namasi. Kiorabandesi atabahai. I plead the blood over us now in the name of Jesus. Bring the unchurched back to your church. Bring the unchurched back to you. Bring the broken and the church hurt people back to you. Show out, God. Bring a breach into the internet like never before. Bring the gospel out like never before. Sound the alarm of revival across the airwaves. Push us out of our comfort zone. Push us out of our churches that we may reach those who have walked Do not entertaining the 99 that we don't care about the one. And we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor for we believe that it is because of your blood and it is because of the name of Jesus that anything that I have prayed can be done and will be done for it is so and so it is in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all. Woo. I prayed a little longer than I had expected. Wonderful, wonderful. To God be the glory. I love you all so much, so much. I'm going to continue to be praying for you. This is the National Day of Prayer, so I could not let you go without saying what I had to say and without praying um, because I do believe that I have not only been called but have been chosen in this season and this time to um, to pray, to pray for us and um, to be a beacon of prayer for all of us. So be good to yourselves. You know what I say, speak well, because the power of life and death is in your tongue. Whatever you speak will be so. Think well, because God can do exceedingly and abundantly above anything you or think. And then I say produce well, because as long as you are speaking well, and as long as you are thinking well, you will produce well. I love you. Have a wonderful night. Good night. Good night.